Hello, trading friends, and welcome back to Forex Focus, brought to you by IG. Taking a look at the March FOMC meeting, what is likely to happen there, but uh, even more importantly, we've had such a transparent uh, Federal Reserve, uh, the U.S. Central Bank, for the last several years, as long as I've been a trader, really the last decade or so, um, that, of course, going into the March meeting, a lot of people wondering what's going to happen in May and June at those upcoming meetings, uh, since it's very likely that the Fed will hold rates unchanged once again at this March meeting. We'll also take a look at what the dot plot might hold, as we're going to get a dot plot here in March, um, and what that means for U.S. interest rates, treasury yields, uh, treasury bonds and uh, all uh, on beyond to the U.S. dollar as well. But let's start with this March meeting, the odds overwhelmingly in the camp of no change. And whenever we look at these projections, keep in mind that we're looking at the Fed funds futures from the CME group and how traders are uh, effectively projecting where the Fed will have interest rates at each of these meetings. And you can see with the March meeting, very close at hand, 99% chance uh, uh, from uh, futures traders that uh, rates are held unchanged where they currently are at the range of five and a quarter to five and a half percent. But with this meeting comes a couple of things. There'll be a press conference from Fed Chair Powell, uh, a statement from the central bankers as well uh, before that press conference. Uh, paired with a dot plot that we'll uh, take a look at the last dot plot in just a second. Um, so a lot of information along with, yes, an interest rate decision that they could change interest rates at, but like you see here, likely not to, um, but a lot of other information as to what's going to happen in the future. Okay, you know, you've been hiking for a few years now, um, and now rates have been unchanged at uh, pretty high levels, 5.5%. Um, what's next? And uh, we look to the May and June meetings for what could potentially be the first interest rate cuts uh, since the, the pandemic, when interest rates were cut down to 0% amid all of the economic instability of the COVID pandemic. Um, now, this is looking to be potentially, uh, hopefully, a smoother transition. Um, but the, the central bankers, the Fed Chair Powell and everybody have said that it looks like this is pretty much the peak in interest rates. And now we're going to look at normalizing interest rates lower. Um, and we'll see what lower means uh, in just a second. Uh, but the, the question that everybody is asking around the Fed in these FOMC meetings is, OK, when are you going to cut? Is, if it's not going to be March, okay, fine. Uh, I mean, if you looked at these probabilities at the end of 2023, March was, there was a, a high probability that the first cut would be in March. Okay, if it's not going to be in March, is it going to be in May? As of right now, only a 7% chance that it's going to be in May. And that was an overwhelming likelihood just a, a handful of weeks ago uh, that there would be a cut by the May meeting. Okay, if it's not going to be in May, then surely it's going to be in June, right? Now that is really close to a 50-50 proposition um, in the June meeting just really a month or two ago uh, was looking at, you know, 70 to 80 percent probability of rates being lowered in that time frame. And so continuing to push out, we'll see that June will be the one that I think a lot of people will be watching to see if the fluctuation is towards uh, okay, first rate cut is going to be there in June or further away from it uh, as the trend has been in recent weeks. We'll also get a dot plot from the Fed, which, you know, it's it's a really broad piece of information. As you can see here, it lets you know uh, each of those blue dots is essentially a vote from one of the U.S. central bankers as to where they think interest rates should be in 2023, 2025. 2026, and then in the longer run. Um, and it's it's helpful, but of course, anything and everything will change uh, before the next, uh, before the May meeting, the June meeting, and obviously before 2026, right? Um, but it lets you know where they're thinking uh, long-term normalized interest rates, so to speak, are. And you can see in that longer term, the focus is around, you know, two to three and a half percent. Okay, so we have a case for where they're trying to get to. 
Um, and going into this year, this is the December dot plot, uh, and we're going to get our first revision to this uh, of 2024 at this March meeting. Uh, but going into this year, the, the focus was really in that 4 to 5% range, so essentially close to 1% lower than where they currently are, uh, or anywhere between 2 and 4% uh, rate cuts um, from the Fed. And then you go on to 2025, and it's kind of 3 to 4%, and then, like I say, in the longer term, uh, 2 to 3.5%. Uh, and so we'll see, we'll get a couple of things from this Fed dot plot. One, if they are, you know, consistent, if this dot plot here from December looks a lot like the March dot plot from uh, 2024 here, um, then that means that they're confident that they still will cut rates here in 2024. So that could be a relieving thing um, uh, for stock traders and everybody else looking for rate cuts. Um, but they could alter this and take a look at, you know, maybe they say inflation's been too sticky and we can't maybe get interest rates as low as we thought we were going to be able to get them in 2024. Maybe it's revised upward. Maybe they, for whatever reason, I don't know what economic data they'd be looking at, but are really looking at moving interest rates lower than what was expected. That seems unlikely. But we'll get a lot from this dot plot in terms of what the Fed is thinking in the foreseeable future. Um, because right now you compare this to what the market is thinking for the end of 2024, and it actually looks really similar. The focus of futures projections from the Fed funds futures for uh, December of this year, so it would essentially be the same timeline, the focus of this curve is right there around 4.5% or you know 75 basis points or three rate cuts lower than where they currently are. Now keep in mind that this curve at the end of 2023 was like three or four rate cuts further uh, down the line than where it is currently. They thought there might be you know, six or seven rate cuts in December of uh, 2023. And so that was a classic case of the Fed thinks three and the market thinks six. And now the market has come closer to what the Fed has thought. But now if they've come closer and then the Fed moves it even uh, further in, We'll see what the market says after that. And obviously, not only implications for Fed funds futures, but Treasury yields will will definitely fluctuate with what the Fed says and what uh, interest rate projections are looking like uh, in terms of Fed funds. But also beyond that, stocks, gold, and U.S. dollar will move um, as all these markets are correlated to interest rates in their own way. And looking at the U.S. dollar correlation, um, you know, very consistently positive for the last year, um, which is to say if they price out more of these interest rate cuts or they keep rates high in the U.S., that could be bullish for U.S. dollar. If they swing back uh, the other way where they were at the end of 2023 and they start to price in more of these rate cuts, that could be bearish for the U.S. dollar. Um, and uh, that movement has its own take in gold, obviously a, a bit of a negative correlation to these markets, uh, stocks, it depends. Uh, but a lot of implications in terms of what Fed Chair Powell says here at the March meeting, unlikely to change rates, but we'll see what he says uh, in his statement, the press conference, and then the dot plot to follow. And from there, we'll uh, take a look at uh, how markets position themselves uh, in light of this coming information. A lot to watch for and a lot to trade coming up.